everybody. My name is Warden, and I will be your host for tonight's entertainment. I was just in the middle of catching up on some research that I've been falling behind on. The uh, Primal Revelation research is something that's caught my interest, but I just simply haven't had the time to uh, finish it just yet. However, now that I am finally getting around to it, there are a couple of things that I have gotten up to while I was gone that I think you'll be interested in. Let me just take a minute to finish this research and see what it's all about. Now let's see. Primal Revelation. Like a flash of lightning, the scribbles unrecognized before now seem crystal clear. You have restored the pages on primordial smithing, the art of high energetic infusion. With it, you shall create pieces of gear that surpass your current by lengths. Its designs clearly indicate that these items were not meant for traveling thaumaturges. This is preparation for the unavoidable conflict with the creatures of the void. And what's best to combat them than the metal created with their knowledge? You shall mold items from full blocks of void metal, items of raw primal power, to protect and arm you. But that's not all. The runes and sockets on said gear will be perfect for the imbuing processes, strengthening their potential even further. Each piece is infused with elemental energies, increasing their potential immensely. Interesting. Primordial weaponry. We'll get to that soon. So it looks like, uh, I'm on my way to an armor upgrade. So as you can see, there's a couple of changes around my research room. I added a beacon as it further enhances the research table. And I made my scribing tools gay. Down here, there hasn't been many changes. I just want to show off how I made my scribing tools gay. I, uh managed to get a primordial pearl out of the uh, loot bags that you can acquire from killing mobs. I've also finished the uh, Potentia factory, which uh, whenever I insert some coal or charcoal, this will smelt it down into Potentia for me to fill my jetpack with. Which, as you can see, I uh, have enough to last me quite some time. Up here, uh, not much has changed. I've just added some carpet so that the arcana elevator is hidden and not sticking out in the room like a sore thumb. Outside, I have refurbished the old bridge here, and I've made a couple new ones. Over here is my Botania Island. I have moved the plants and the monopoles over here, so that uh, they're not taking up room on the primary islands. I've installed warnings as reminders to my forgetful self, because I do happen to have open items. This system right here is a vanilla solution to a modded problem, technically, but it works just as well as uh, any other solution. So what this is, is pressure plate hooked up to repeater on a slight timer, facing into redstone torches, which in its default state will be on, locking this hopper, and when stuff la is uh, removed from the pressure plate, exactly five pieces of charcoal will drop down into the system. Though I'm going to quickly restart this system just by taking out all the coal, just because the flowers have gotten desynchronized. However, as you can see, I already have a fairly substantial amount of mana just from this system. And this is just from a few, leaving it alone for probably about half an hour. If you want to make this system yourself, you just take a wooden pressure plate, you take a repeater, pull it back to three ticks. Then you want to pillar up nine blocks, put a redstone torch on every other block like the uh, scene here have a uh, hopper facing into an open crate and make sure that the rest of the torch is next to the hopper or connected to the hopper in any other way and yeah when you step on the pressure plate or when items land on the pressure plate it will deactivate the torch on top it will act sorry it will activate the torch on top locking the hopper so that it is only able to drop a set amount as you can see, demonstrated just there.
And again, this is a vanilla solution to a modded problem. I imagine that there are probably better ways to automate the end of flame, but it's the one that I know the best and it is the one that is the least resource intensive. And you can set the repeater to any amount. This is specifically for five endo flames. You're going to want to adjust the height and the delay of the repeater, because by default, this height, and with the repeater set to no delay, it will drop four items. On three ticks, it'll uh, drop five, and I believe you can add additional repeaters at like a greater distance from the main body to increase the delay, which will increase how many items are dropped. You're gonna have to trial and error that one though. From down here, you can see I have added more leaves and I've started trimming the edge of this island. I want each island to sort of have a semi-consistent visual style, though I do want each one to be somewhat unique. And if we go over here, we can see the bridge to the, uh, the boulder is finally completed, so I don't have to fly over here every time I want to come visit. In the park, I have started making preparations. I've added stairs and uh, wheelchair ramps, though I should mention that uh, in real life, these this would be way too steep an incline or a decline. But, uh, I mean, we're on a floating rock in the middle of the sky. I'm sure it's, uh, we can take some creative liberties. A real wheelchair ramp, you don't want to be any more than 15 degrees on an incline, though uh, even so, that's still pushing it. The ideal incline is closer to, like, I think it's like 5 degrees? I want to say five, like 3 to 5 degrees is the ideal like wheelchair incline. I haven't made many changes over here. Most of the changes that have happened over here have happened in the form of my new spells. I went and upgraded a bunch of my older spells to be much, much, much more powerful. So for example, my old Wizard Obliterator spell has been renamed to the Wizard Annihilator. And as you can see, it does nearly double the old damage. I'm not sure why, but my new lightning spell does way more damage, even though they all have the same amount of damage in, um, multipliers on them. And the ice spell does the least amount of damage. Not sure what's up with that. Something something in affinity, probably. I still need to fix up and move this old bridge, but uh, that can wait until a later date. Getting these bridges to look good actually took quite a bit more trial and error than I'm willing to admit. Now in the construction of the communications tower side of things, I haven't been able to make a lot of progress. Namely that I have run out of gravel, and there are only two methods to do so. The alchemic chemistry set, which is a blood magic thing, and unfortunately, I am physically incapable of doing blood magic. And mana infusion using a conjuration catalyst, which uh, requires me to open the Alfheim portal to get elementum. So I think I'm going to dig further into Batania progress. So that way I have a more reliable source of gravel in order to make enough concrete to build the, the comms tower, namely the outer shell. Concrete itself doesn't conduct much magic or lend itself very well to being a huge vector of radio energies, but that's precisely why I'm using it as my primary building material, because concrete is so inert that it will not interfere. Or at least, that is my hope. So let's see what I have to do to open the Alfheim portal, though I have done this before, like I'm not a spring chicken when it comes to this sort of stuff, I'm just uh, a little bit rusty, let's say. Here we go. This is the uh, portal to Alfheim. Let me see. Living wood blocks, three glimmering living wood, one elven gateway core, two mana pools, two natura pylons. Elven gateway core. Natura pylon. Okay, so I'm going to have to make terra steel. So let us go and see the steps for terra steel. Terrestrial agglomeration plate, to set on top of a checkerboard pattern of blah 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 blah. Okay, 
And I'm gonna have to get into runes. Alright. So, I'm going to need to get the pure daisies that I forgot down there. And I'm going to have to make a bunch of living rock. I'm going to have to make a runic altar. I'm going to have to uh, do all that good stuff that you need to do to set up your uh, Botania setup. Basically, um, the outermost layer of Botania is End of Flames and Alchemy Catalysts. And then if you want to get anywhere in the game, like at all, like anywhere in Botania, you're going to have to um, break into runic altars, the terrestrial agglomeration plate, all that, just to uh, be able to to uh, make any further progress. I'll put a uh, arcane levitator here. All right, let's set up a little space for the pure daisies. Yeah, I have room. Oh, while I'm getting building materials, I did find a replacement for my cobblestone generator. It won't generate smooth stone, so I'll have to cook the stone if I want to do it. But it'll be a better replacement than the uh, the other system. Because the current system, if I mine it for too long, for whatever reason, the lava moves faster than the water can regenerate. And then you get a crap ton of cobblestone that you can't do anything with. Also, while I'm working on this, you may see the cobblestone line in the distance here. This is not your eyes playing tricks on you. This is the very beginnings of what I plan to make my border walls. Still cutting it a little bit close with the ceiling. Yeah, this'll do. Doing a similar thing that I did in my thaumaturgical setup, where I'm creating a set of uh, interior rooms down here. The Botania lends itself much more aesthetic-wise to having an open-air setup. I uh, am just much more of a fan of having things be organized into set amounts of rooms rather than having an open concept. Makes things feel a lot more organized, in my opinion. So just give me a moment to set up this floor. Okay, so back to what I was doing. I need to make a terrestrial agrarable plate, which requires a runic altar, which uh, is just living rock over a pearl of diamonds, or no, just a pearl, uh, which is a uh, living rock over a pearl or a diamonds. So the Botania Runic Altar works actually very similarly to the Infusion Altar from Thomcraft. The main difference is, um, well, number one, it doesn't explode if you leave it alone for too long. And uh, number two, it's much more stable and less resource intensive. So you can uh, get away with a little bit more. I'm going to put this just here for now. Now I'm going to repoint this uh, mana spreader to this. And we are going to make ourselves runes. Now we already have a rune of fire. That was a quest reward, I believe. Okay, yeah, these all have um, somewhat elaborate crafting recipes. I'll walk through a couple of them and then the I'll skip ahead to uh, when I'm finished up. Here, I'll show you how that works for the Rune of Mana, because I can make that one right now. So you do Mana Pearl. Then you do one, two, three, four, five. And then you throw this. And then you do this. And this is making a Runic, uh, a Rune of Mana. If you hold your wand, you can see the progress on it. See that uh, little tiny Rune of Mana appearing in the in the middle of the screen there, the way it's slowly ticking to blue. That means it's feeding mana to the runic altar to make our rune. And it is almost done. There you go. So I'll make the rest of them and uh, again, you do your thing, you put your ingredients on, then you queue a block of living rock onto it, right click it with land and you're good. Quest completed. I just have one more set of runes to make. 
There we go. While that is crafting, let us make the terrestrial agglomeration plates. There we go. Now, the terrestrial agglomeration plate is just one tiny component. Making terra steel is a huge endeavor because it is very, very, very expensive mana wise. So, this is just the beginning. Let me go and uh, get more lapis so that I can make a checkerboard for the terrestrial agglomeration plate to sit upon. But yes, this is just the beginning of making terra steel. Making terra steel requires a few more ingredients than this. But once I have the terra steel, then I can start making the portal to Alfheim. And I can get that conjuration catalyst to make more gravel. Now I'm going to want the terrestrial agglomeration plate to be in full view of these mana spreaders. This is just, again, it's a temporary location for it while I work on things. i be moving uh, uh, some of this downstairs, leaving some of it upstairs as decoration. There we go. Yeah, I'll be moving some of this downstairs. Okay, now it's time for the uh, the ingredients. Mana pearl, mana steel, and a mana diamond. So basically, a pearl, a diamond, and an ingot will make one terra steel. So you want to throw it like this. That's how you do it, right? Oh, it's not perfectly centered, of course not. How about now? There we go. See those, uh, it's harder to see. There we go. See those, uh, blue glowy spots? That is the terrestrial magic converging upon this set of items. Honestly, the main price of Terra Steel for me isn't the diamonds. It is um, how annoyingly fucking long it's going to take to make even like a small pat batch of this shit. That being said, Terra Steel is one of the best armor sets in the game. You'd be hard pressed to find something better. I'm going to go get some more diamonds to alchemize into mana diamonds, and I'll be right back. Let me take this... There we go. You can speed this up with more and better um, mana spreaders, but uh, this is all I've got for now, Chief. Oh, and if you accidentally pick up one of those items while they're being transformed like that, it restarts the entire process over again. Ooh. Signal flare? That's a... That's a weird, uh, that's a weird, uh, reward. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Hmm. I wonder if I can use that as part of the comms tower. Oh, and the items can despawn as well, I should mention. You know, because that's fun and balanced. Let me try and... See if I can get two of these suckers in. Again, more mana spreaders means it'll arrive faster. Though you can only do so much with these uh, basic mana spreaders. You're going to want to upgrade to uh, better mana spreaders right away. While that is happening, I'm going to make some uh, living wood. And uh, glimmering living wood is just um, glowstone, right? Yeah, it's just glowstone. Did it? Oh, it despawned the bitch. Oh, I'm s Oh, I am. I am displeased. I'll leave it there. Displeased. Oh, that sucks. I'm gonna let the pools build up mana for a little while ago because all that mana I do not get back even though it was completely wasted. Admittedly, this is probably why I don't dabble in Botania as much as I probably should. It's sometimes a bit needlessly punishing to play this mod. It's a little dark in here. I'll, uh, I'll come in and add a arcane lamp. 
really, really quick. Black Lotus is, by the way, um, add mana to your system. In case you were curious. Let's try this again. There we go. Now, when I come back upstairs, there better be Terra Steel. I'm gonna get mana spreaders pointing down from upstairs or pointing uh, upward from some sort of uh, regening mana. Just something to feed these uh, this system. Probably at least one um, mana spreader directing it down from the end of flame setup since that will continue on infinitely as long as I put stuff in there. And if I attach it to a tree farm that's hooked up to a furnace array, then it will truly be infinite. Alright, that's everything except for the elven gateway core. We're just living wood around terra steel nugs. Hi! So, this is Warden from a couple of minutes from that last time you saw me. Uh, my game crashed. And, um, it did generate an error message, but that error message was exception in server tick loop which in case you're curious for those who are uninitiated in reading minecraft error messages that is the minecraft error equivalent of archaeologists saying something is for ritual purposes it's basically minecraft's way of saying i don't know something just went wrong i don't know you figure it out you're the guy who changed the instance right you figure it out so hopefully things will proceed as normal. I'm hoping that my world is fine. I have experienced a couple of crashes. Old Minecraft is just kind of like that. And uh, overall it was a little bit unnerving. I'm hoping to move past it though and that it was uh, not an indicator of future issues. I have a feeling that shit's going to despawn again. I don't think I have enough mana spreaders. Don't you do it. Turn into Terra Steel. Don't you despawn. Turn into Terra Steel. Do it. Turn into Terra Steel. The urge to just pull out a stack of TNT. Oh, I would do unspeakable things. Okay, so clearly this, whatever this is that I'm doing, it's not working. I'm just gonna make some more living wood, make some more mana spreaders, how about, and see if that doesn't fix anything, because if this doesn't fix things, there is going to be fire raining down from the sky for eons to come, so help me god. Oh, the nearly unspeakable levels of rage. Okay. It's ugly as hell, but it should make it so that I get my fucking terra so I get my fucking terra steel. I am so ready to be done with this already for the day. Once I open the portal to Alfheim, then I can get Dreamwood spreaders, and that should be much better for a uh, long-term Botania than this bullshit. Make Terra Steel or fucking die. Actually, you know what? I'm pretty sure it wouldn't break the ritual to add extras, right? Oh, well, what? Okay, fuck me, I guess. I was hoping maybe if I added extras, it'd be able to replace it in case they died, but I'll fuck myself instead, I guess. Looks like sparks might be the best way to move this stupid mana around. Put sparks over these stupid mana pools, maybe it'll get there faster. And then my items can stop despawning and I can stop wasting my time and ripping and tearing and killing. Now if this doesn't work, I'm gonna blow up that entire fucking island into a smoking crater. One more time, with feeling. Yes! Finally! This is what it's supposed to look like! Yes! It's turning green! 
Finally. Finally! Oh! Give me that shit. Let me make the gateway core. Yes. Yes. There we go. One major piece of the puzzle is done. Now I just need to make the Natura pylons. Alright, I'm pretty sure this, uh... Yeah, this requires Terra Steel itself around a mana pylon, so I just need, um, mana pylons. And then I should be good. Oh, oh, yes, you are so cheap. Yes, you are so cheap. Oh, you are so cheap. Okay, okay, okay. Yay! Nature Pylon. Okay. Almost there. And there we go. Alright, so I'm gonna need to wait till mana builds up in these pools. But at once that has happened, I can open this up this gate, change this, get fairy, all the fairy shit get that Conjuration Catalyst, and then I will be able to double a bunch of difficult-to-get resources. Ooh, I am... I am... very upset. Like, residual upsetness, not just, like, at anything, just, you know, residual pain, agony, misfortune, that. Other than, like, the residual pain, I am very, very excited. Let's expedite things a little bit by tossing this uh, mana tablet we got as a quest reward into the pools, eh? These mana tablets can hold quite a lot. There we go. Alrighty. Thank you, fine gentleman. I am interested to see what you have to say to me. Greetings. We noticed that our portal was opened via a link from another world. That's rather shocking news indeed. We thank you very much for providing us with a repository of the knowledge from your world as to keep us up to date to what happened since we left it. It's been a while since then. It's good to see it's doing well. After some discussion with the High Council of Elvengard, we have decided to cooperate with you. You see, reading through your Lexica Botania has shown us a good amount of resources from your world that we would be extremely keen as to get our hands on, as these are non-existent in our lands. The link you have managed to establish is rather weak. No living beings will be able to go through it, as you already know. However, there is a positive side to this. The link strikes the fabric of time in both of our worlds in a way where it doesn't keep them in sync. That's the reason why you received your book back so quickly. When it comes to mana and other magical energies, we are plenty stocked on them, so worry not about the portal closing on our end. Let's put this in prospect. In order for the advance of both our civilizations, we vow to accept a given set of resources from your world we lack in ours, in exchange for resources you lack in yours. We have taken the liberty of assigning our best scribes to put together a great set of knowledge from our world we're willing to share. You can find it in your lexicon just as you'd find knowledge from yours. We hope you find it enlightening and that encourages you to invest in our materials. Last but not least, do keep in mind that if you decide to send something we have not vouched to trade for, we will assume it as a gift and keep it for ourselves, just as a forewarning. We look forward to exchanging resources with you. Best regards, the High Council of Elfengard. Well, well, well. Looks like the elves are, uh, more than willing to uh, repair relations with the overworld. I certainly hope that nobody tells them that uh, 
things are not going that well for the Overworldians as of late. I would, uh, hate to break their little hearts. Still, though, they have stuff that I need, and it'd be very, very nice to uh, have those things. So first things first, we're gonna want to, uh... They'll take, um, two mana steel per element of ingot, which is crafted using elven, um, materials. Things that, uh, don't seem to exist anymore on this side of the portal. So I'll take a couple of these. I'm a big fan of, uh, the color, let me tell ya. They'll give me pixie dust in exchange for these pearls. And it looks like it's a one-to-one -one ratio for these guys. And then they give Dragonstone, interesting name, in exchange for mana diamonds. And in exchange for mana glass, they give elf glass. I wish I could send letters to them. That'd be fun. Be nice to have a pen pal. Still though, that means that I can make the conjuration catalyst now. Yes, I will need an al another alchemy catalyst, but that is uh, a very small obstacle in the grand scheme of things. So uh, let me just put together the last couple of materials that I need. Here we go. Conjuration catalyst. Oh, there's so much shit. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Oh my god, it, it just gives you elementum. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Oh girly, we are breaking into the fun part of Botania. And again, this will just go here temporarily. Conjuration Catalyst goes underneath. And we want to take our mana spreader, link it to there. Now we have our Conjuration Catalyst, and we have a shitload of mana tablets we can empty out into the pools. Yeah, baby! And now, for the grand finale, a test. Let me go get a piece of gravel. Now, if the Conjuration Catalyst works as advertised, this should turn into two pieces of gravel when I place it in the Conjuration Catalyst. Yes. Oh. We are going to have so much fun together, you and I. This is so, so much faster than mining up gravel underwater. Very, very good. With the portal to Alfheim open, our conjuration catalyst made, and therefore our continuous source of gravel for concrete, I think I'm gonna call it here. So, uh, thank you for watching! If you liked this video, why not like, subscribe, share it with your friends, leave a comment if you want, and, uh, next time, now that we have assured ourselves of a source of gravel, we are going to start laying down the framework for our communications tower. Until then, my name is Ben Warden, and I am signing off for tonight. Have a good evening, everybody.